Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video I'm going to cover Power BI in Power Apps. Now this is not like the previous videos where you've got a Power BI report, you've gone ahead and started creating a Power Apps, it opens up in the Power Apps canvas and you have got that Power BI integration connection. Also this is not like the other videos where you can go ahead and automatically filter a Power BI visual if you've gone ahead and selected an item in the gallery. Sure, all that can still be done, but now in this video, I'm going to talk about the new Power BI connector, where with that connector, that Power BI visual will automatically refresh for any CRUD operations you've done. And by CRUD, I mean the create, read, update, and delete. So this is what I'm going to cover, but first, here's my intro video. So here's my Power Apps Canvas app, and my goal is to have a visual over here, a Power BI visual, um, that will automatically refresh. And as you can see that uh, it is basically a very simple app, uh, and I'm giving major kudos to my uh, three big pals, it's Shane, Young, Reza, and April over here. Um, they are major contributors of uh, the Power Platform we use as well, so I'm sure they'll love it when I uh, use their names over here. And um, so it's just a place to go ahead and put the test scores. But the key thing over here is I'm using a delegable data source, which in this case is the, um, the common data service or the Dataverse. Um, also, when I'm using the Dataverse, I got to make sure that it is set to be delegable. So let's just go and take a look at that real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm actually coming into my Power Apps. Um, and I'm right, right here, actually, I can confirm that, hey, this is my environment. So let's go ahead and take a look. So, yep, that is my environment. I go into the Power Platform Admin. I should click over there, um, and it directly opens up. And in my Power Platform Admin, I can go ahead and click on the environment name, which is the dev. Uh, and two things I get from here. One is I can confirm that the database version is greater than that 9.1 something something. As long as it's 9.2, I'm good. The other thing I'm going to need from here is the environment URL. Now, the environment URL is how I'm going to make that connection for that Power BI report. So let's quickly take a look at that report that I've built. I've actually come over here, um, and this is the report. In fact, this is the um, direct, uh, you know, the page that I'm going to go ahead and get. And also to take a quick look at this, I'll come over here to my report, and I can go ahead and click on the uh, transform data. In my transform data, it opens up into the query editor. In the query editor over here, I can click on the uh, data source settings. And right now, you can see that is the Dynamics uh, connection that I've made. So just to be sure if that is the environment that I'm using, I'm going to go back to my environment area right here. I'm going to take a quick screenshot of that environment name, which over here is called as the environment URL. So we can just do a quick one-to-one -one comparison. Come back over here in my Power uh, BI and Let's just do a comparison, just to be sure. All right, so as you can see, the, the, the full name matches up, which tells me is that that is the data source settings that I have connected with, and that's correct, the data is coming in. But one other thing we need to confirm is do I have all the right settings over there? So for that, I gotta go back into my uh, admin center over here, and now staying in the environments, I come into the settings. In the settings, I gotta go to the products, and I gotta go in to look at the features, and in my features, I can go ahead and make sure that, yep, my tabular data stream or TDS is enabled. So I've gone and done two things. I've validated that the report I built is connected to the correct data source um, and that data source is delegable. So quality went ahead and did that. Now, the other things that I did for the data sources, you know, I've gone ahead and published it. So it shows up over here, published it. And then using this uh, Power BI report, I've created a dashboard. And so this is what the dashboard looks like. I've actually taken two visuals from that um, report. And actually, the main one I'll be focusing on is over here. So kind of understand all of this and keep in mind. The other final thing we will need from here is this URL. So me is always the primary my workspace, Power BI side is a primary workspace. If you were to go ahead and create another or, or use this from another workspace, that me would change into something else. And then the other thing you're going to need is what is the dashboard you know, uh, ID name over there. It looks like this big long grid over there. But the two things you're going to need from here is the, um, the workspace and then the dashboard one over here. All right. So kind of keep that in mind. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, grab that information and keep that available. So I just did a control C and I have that available. All right, so we've done all the basic, you know, gathering all the information. Now let's go and start working on the Power App side. So 
Again, I'm not focusing on building this Power App, but it's a very simple app. I've just got a gallery over here, which is connected to that data source. And over here, I'm gonna use it to either view the data or to go ahead and update it. So basically, if I just come over here and I select any, you know, over here, it shows that record over there. I select the same thing for Reza, so on and so forth. And it shows, you know, April's as well. So it just kind of shows all this information over here. But now I wanna go ahead and get that Power BI visual. So let's do that first. All right, so I come over here now and selecting in, I go to the insert, I go to charts, I go and get the Power BI title. You know what? I actually missed a step. <laughs> Got too excited. I haven't made the connection yet. So let's go see that new connector. So I go to connectors over here. And as you know, when you have the connector, this search now actually searches in this connectors. So I'm just going to type in Power BI. And there you go. It's got the Power BI in a suite of business analytics, blah, blah, blah. But one thing I want you to keep in mind is right now this is in preview. That's why you see this little you know, bulb uh, connect, uh, icon over there seeing that this connector is in preview. One of the things that you know I tell about previews is that kind of be careful of going into production with this because it's in preview. However, it is in preview, which means it's not too far away from being production. So you want to start playing with it, getting familiar with it, have ideas ready for your next apps and next you know, power platform integration. All right, so I'm going to cover here. I'll select it. You come back in, I'll create my Power BI over here. I'll select it, come back and select over here. And now it is going to go ahead and create that connection. Okay, now I can go and start adding the Power BI charts. I got way too excited on that. So, all right, slow down, Daniel. Okay, so in my case, remember it was in my workspace. So I created in the my workspace. The dashboard name, I just called it as the student test score. Um, so I'll select that. And then over here, I've got the few tiles. So the ones that I want to select is this one. That's the tile. Now my name, I know kind of like, what is the CR rec and everything? Because I just stuck, stuck with the default names that came in from the uh, connection over there, uh, from the Dataverse. Uh, you will know what your dashboard name is. You will know what your tile name is. So kind of just keep all of that in mind. So now that I've made the connection, it has gone ahead and pulled that visual directly from the Power BI. So just to go ahead and take a look, this is the visual that we went, well, this is the, this is the visual that we captured. It's interesting that some of the color looks a little different, but we'll save that topic for another day. All right, so we come back over here. Let me just now make it a little bit smaller, enlarged, and there you go. You've gone ahead and now gotten that nice data. So next thing we wanna do is kind of make it auto-responsive. And to do that, I need to use this new function which is available. So I'll put that in a few places. First, I need to put that in the save button. So as you can see, my save button over here is actually nothing fancy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually now um, use right there outside, I think I'll do it, yeah, after the form has, data has been submitted enough as a reset, I'll go ahead and add it over here. And in here, I'm going to use Power BI Refresh Dataset. That's the sweet one, because it's gonna automatically go and refresh our dataset. So that's what I'm gonna do over here. Now it says I need you to get the group ID and the data set ID. Now the group ID we already know. Remember I went and showed in that URL is going to be ME because it was my workspace, but we gotta get that data set ID as well. Now the data set ID is not the same as the dashboard ID. We actually gotta go into the data set of that report. So let's go take a look at it. I'm gonna come over here now um, and I need to go and look at the data set. So the data sets uh, is already available in the menu. So I gotta click on the data set and now I gotta find my report. So the, the report name is the same as the data set's name. So it's that one, student test score. So I click on the ellipses over here and there's something called as um, settings. So I click on settings and then you don't really search for it over here. You go straight back to the URL because it tells you, hey, that is the data set URL or the ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and capture this entire thing and I'm gonna do a control C, so I've got it. Now let's go back into our um, uh, Canvas app, and now I'm gonna start putting in my information. So I put a double quotes, ME, close quotes, comma, double quotes, paste the ID, close the double quotes, brackets, comma, and we are done on this side over here. Now, I am going to also do that in a few other places. So for example, I'm going to now, if I were to say, go ahead and delete any items. Like right here, I put a delete function, now in the delete function, I want the same refresh to happen. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and put that somewhere, uh, somewhere right here, all right? Oops, I gotta put in the uh, Power BI, refresh data set, double quotes, ME, close, double quotes, close, comma, double quotes, paste the data set ID, close the quote there, and I gotta put a semicolon. 
So that will take care of that. Now, this is neat, but there's going to be one issue that you're going to run into. So let me show you what that is, all right? So I come over here, hit the play button, and let's, okay, we've got all the math scores. So let's go and start giving, um, say they took an English test, all right? So I'm going to hit plus, and I'm going to say first one is uh, Shane Young. Shane took an English test, and he scored A99. And I'll avoid the data. I'll just hit save. All right, so new data has come through. It is stored in the Power BI data. Was I see over here that Shane went ahead and scored. Actually, went and refreshed it. Um, I must have selected that. Anyway, Shane went ahead and got a um, uh, you know a, a score on English over there. Um, and um, so the, you know everything's updating. The, the 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 gallery also updated. But if you noticed, this one did not. And just to again show, I'm going to click on the play over here and give Shane Young. Uh, let's say we've got to give now math and math would be 90 math chain is good. So we'll just give it 9900 over there. Click on save. And there you go. We got um, 100 for shade and math 99 in um, English. So I should see one over here because English is the blue one. I should see a math one. So what's going on? Like why isn't this updating over here? And that is a quick tip that I'm going to show you because the, the visual connection is going on. It is a live connection over there, but for some reason it does not update. And by the way, this is a slight bug over here. Uh, it goes ahead and actually gives that error. It updates it. You can ignore that for now. This has, it is going to be fixed, but that's not the reason for the problem. The reason over here is it is not getting refreshed. So let me select that um, visual over there. And in that visual, the tile URL is perfect. Nothing wrong over there. What you gotta do is go ahead and uh, reset it. So I'll show you this little trick that I've come up with. In the trick, I actually go ahead and do a um, uh, an if statement, and for that if statement, it goes ahead and refreshes uh, the form. So here's here's what I'm going to do. Is based on the save button. I've got this functionality. It's usually for my height spinner, you know, the pop-ups which are just doing on spinning. But I'm going to leverage that one over here as well. So let's say that if this is false. Um, the initially, when I hit the button, it goes false, and then after that, it goes ahead into true over here. What I'm going to do is now for the Power BI visual, this one over here, in the reset, I'm going to add this. So if hide equals false, go ahead and make it true. Otherwise, go ahead and make it um, true or make it false. All right. So I can do that. Now let's go ahead and try this again. So if I go ahead and now try that, uh, let's say for April, April Denim, uh, and this is for math. So April's really good in math, so I'm gonna give it 100. Now I go ahead and click on save, the visual happens. Now you see what happens? The visual is updating, and voila. Not only did it update April's, it also went and updated chains over there. So it's working. Now let's think about what this is happening. Now, for the first time, and this is awesome because you know I've been working on this Power BI for a while, integration, and this was a huge game changer because not only are we getting, you know, like we, we've got to update that data, um, the dashboard manually, and then pull that over here. This thing is updating the data set in the back end. It is automatically doing that. Well, not automatically, you're doing it, but now you have direct access to that data set over there. This is, this is huge, and you're able to directly do that inside the Power Apps. It's not that I actually built a flow to go ahead and trigger the reset of the data set. This is happening directly inside from Power Apps Canvas. So now I want to go ahead and just do the same thing over here. Again, I'm going to, in fact, you know what, just to prove the point that even though you see that error over here, let's go and give Reza a score as well. Me and Reza also scored a hundred in math. So you saw that error. I'm going to click on save. Everything is happening. Refresh, blah, 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 blah. Nice, nice, nice. And Reza score also update. I think I spelled his name now, that's why. But you see the point? For now, in the preview, ignore that error. Um, but it works. It still works. So the same thing we can do over here as well on the delete. So on the delete, we've got it, all this information. So if I were to go ahead and now run it and say, where is the wrong Reza right here? Yep. If I go and delete that, same thing happens. And then goes ahead and deletes that wrong Reza. See? Went away. Now I can go ahead and add the correct Reza spelling. And that is math. Reza is awesome at math. Click on save. And voila, it'll go ahead and update that Power BI way here. So this is huge. Now, I went ahead and did this on the Power BI, uh, Power BI and um, the data was data set. The exact same thing happens on the SQL as well. And I'll just quickly show you on the SQL side. 
Um, this is my SQL table over here. Um, I mean, sorry, my SQL Canvas app, and I've done all the same work on the SQL as well. In fact, in my Canvas over here, I've got another report directly for pulling it directly from the SQL side. If I scroll down, I'll be able to go and grab that really fast. Right there, so that is the uh, report that I've created. And then that is the dashboard. And then I've also gone ahead and gotten the data set ID of the uh, uh, the, the dashboard. So here's basically what it is. See, went ahead and grabbed um, the names. So it's basically the same thing, same thing. Took these visuals, put it in a dashboard. When I went, I, uh, once I got the report done, I had a data set, grabbed the name of the data set. And this is basically the same thing. So the functionality is, is fully functional um, in the, uh, in the uh, SQL integration one as well. So if I go and now give them, say, math scores again, Reza Dorani math again 100 if I click save the same thing is going on because I've done the same process the only difference over here two uh, uh, two visuals over this it kind of helped you know prove a point over there so let's quickly review all that we just did now for the first time we are able to do a full crud operation which is create read update and delete using the direct Power BI connector, which is available over there. And I show you that little trick is that even though the data is added, uh, in order to refresh the database uh, or refresh the visual, you use that reset function. And I've shown you the combination of that uh, um, set command that I've used. You use the set command inside that uh, reset, and it just works over there. Finally, I also showed you that in this case, obviously it has to be the same, you know, delegable data sources. And the two main ones that I showed you was the Dataverse over there and also the Power BI. But in Dataverse, make sure that the, uh, yeah, the, the Dataverse table version is higher. Um, and also you've turned on the TDS over there. But on SQL, it's just SQL, it all works, and it's just great. So hopefully this was helping. And as always, keep doing Power BI integration.